Hello, this video is about free RTOS uh, QSET. Uh, QSET uh, are rarely used, but they do solve um, some corner case problems or they do solve problems in an advanced uh, RTOS application. I'm going to be using free RTOS simulator on Windows, but uh, you can run this example on any free RTOS based application. So here's the problem. The problem is that you have a consumer or a processor in this case, and this function uh, wants to block on either a semaphore or a queue. So in this case, um, uh, I've presented a somewhat simple problem, but you can extend this example where you can block on multiple queues at the same time. So the again, the problem is you have run into a situation where you want to block on multiple queues. You want to block on this, you want to block on that, you want to block on something else, and it's uh, not feasible to um, to block for one millisecond on, on each of the handles because then you're polling. You don't want to block on uh, one handle and then the next one and the next one for a short time just to see which one unblocked. The idea is you want to unblock when any of the um, queues or semaphores you're waiting on uh, receive an event. So in this case, I've created a semaphore, uh, which is sent by the producer one hertz semaphore task. And every once a second, we provide a one hertz semaphore. So we provide this signal for some consumer to unblock precisely every once a second. And on the, other, uh, on the second task, I have a producer that is a producer of data, and it's going to post the data onto this uh, queue, uh, which is uh, data of one integer value. So it's going to randomly produce samples, and it's going to uh, send the samples into the data queue handle. Now, this example might be slightly slower because I have decided to code uh, as I go along. So uh, please be patient. Uh, right now, the processor is empty. So the idea is I want to be in a position where I'm unblocked either when the semaphore is uh, true or when the producer produces data. So uh, although I have used the semaphore and the queue handle, one important uh, thing is that you have to create these handles. So I'm going to first create my semaphore. Okay. It's important that um, before you create a queue set, the queue and the semaphore are empty. So I know that X semaphore create binary creates a, a binary semaphore that is empty. Likewise, I'm going to say data queue handle equals to X queue create and item length, let's just say 10 and size of integer is one item. So of course this example takes for granted that you know how basics of tasks and semaphores and queues, how they work. Now, now is the important part. I'm going to create a, a queue set and here's how it works. So I have a queue set handle and let's call it something like um, data or sem semaphore um, queue set handle. So I have to create, I have to create this handle uh, just by declaring a variable doesn't actually create it. So bear with me. I have actually not used queue set API recently. Um, so here is the queue create set API X Q create set. Now this parameter is very, very important. Uh, in order for you to unblock um, on multiple items, the length of the uh, queue set is very, very important. It, it needs to be able, so I'm gonna oversimplify a little bit. It needs to be able to absorb all elements that you want to unblock for. So imagine that you had three queues you wanted to unblock for. Q1 was uh, three items long, Q2 was five or six items long, and Q3 was seven items long. And then you had a binary semaphore. 
So binary semaphore is, is going to be just one. So when you create the queue set, um, in a way, you have to be able to absorb as many items as all of your queues and semaphore combined. So in this case, I would create the um, queue set with the length of 17. Okay. So it's not that you have a double copy going on, uh, but it needs to be able to absorb um, as many pointers as the items. So when you say 11, uh, again, this is a slightly oversimplification, uh, you're not uh, allocating memory for 10 queue items and one binary semaphore. You're just absorbing uh, 11 um, pointer um, worth of data. So this is very, very important. That's number one. And number two, um, you have to make sure that this uh, binary semaphore is empty and the queue doesn't have any items in it. So that's very important. Okay, so I'll, I'll note that down for you here. Make sure that the uh, queues or sem you are absorbing are empty. Okay, so you've created a queue set, but just because you've created a queue set doesn't mean that this semaphore and this queue is associated with the queue set. I'm going to follow the free RTOS example, and I have to add the queue or the semaphore to the set. So it should be as simple as queue set Q add x q add and the first uh, parameter is the q or semaphore handle. So this is the one hertz semaphore. I'm trying to associate with data or semaphore. Okay, so copy and paste. So now I have sort of connected the dots. I have connected the fact that whenever somebody sends a uh, semaphore here, it has an effect on this data or semaphore queue set handle. Whenever somebody sends a queue item here, it has an effect on this data or semaphore queue set handle. Okay, so I'll make a comment. Um, associate the semaphore and queue to the queue set handle. Now, the producer of the semaphore should just provide the semaphore. The consume, uh, the producer of data should just send the data to the queue handle. But it's very, very important that now you don't bypass it and do not do this. So you don't want to do this anymore. If you do this even once, you, you've kind of um, ruined the mechanism and it's, your application is not going to be deterministic anymore. Once you've associated a queue or a semaphore to a queue set, you never want to pr consume through that handle directly. So the way we do that is going to be following the free RTOS example. Okay, so now what you do is you use the queue select from set. Again, you don't want to retrieve it from the queue or you don't want to um, uh, take the semaphore directly. You want to now go through the queue set to figure out who unblocked you because both the semaphore and the producer of the queue are posting indirectly to the data or semaphore queue handle. So in this case, I have unblocked for two seconds because I know that the semaphore is going to be provided at one hertz or at one millisecond or 1,000 milliseconds every single time. Now, when you say queue select from set, you get returned the handle of who unblocked you. So now, if you checked who unblocked equals equals to one hertz 
and the other possibility is who unblocked equals equals to data queue and then else is going to be an invalid case because this should never happen in our application because we're supposed to get the one hertz semaphore um, uh, consistently. Now, knowing that who blocked you, now you have to go ahead and uh, assert on the fact that the one hertz semaphore is given. So now this has to be true, x semaphore take. And then the else case is going to be an error. Because I know for a fact that I got unblocked by the one hertz semaphore, it guarantees that you can now get uh, the semaphore with the zero timeout over here. So likewise, I know that who unblocked is the data uh, data queue. So I, sh I should be able to simply x queue receive from the queue handle. So that's data queue. Let me just print out what I retrieved declare x over here and then the else case is not possible the fact that i know that who unblocked is the data queue handle that means the queue has an item waiting for me already so i can uh, i can receive with a zero timeout so let me compile this program i believe i have all the pieces right again um, this was a brave example of me uh, just trying to do the video in runtime. Let's see if it works. Nothing works the first time. Okay, it actually worked perfectly the first time. So now that you see, uh, I, I, I had a producer that was randomly producing data. And for whatever reason, uh, you want to also make sure that um, eventually uh, you time out at one hertz as well. So to make this example more meaningful, what I could have done is every time I receive data from the queue, I go ahead and keep collecting all my samples together. And then every time I get the one hertz timeout, I could go ahead and print the sample uh, data average. So give me just a few seconds. Let me get that code in. Okay, so the code that I have in uh, is slightly improved to uh, create a more meaningful, meaningful example. So every time there is an item in the queue, what I'm doing is I keep adding to my samples array the sample that arrived. Okay, and at one hertz, what I want to do is I computed the average of the samples that arrived, and at one hertz, I want to print the average. And this is a meaningful example that you cannot otherwise simply do by um, unblocking on the queue um, by using some tricky timeout or using some kind of a polling based timer to, to know when it's been one second since your last one because it's not going to be that precise. So let me just run, run this example and I'll have a random producer that produces samples. It could be anywhere from one to three or four samples, it depends on the uh, randomness. And what's happening now is that Regardless of, so I stopped the program, by the way. Um, so in here, I produced three samples in a one hertz cycle and I printed the average to two. Then on the next uh, one second interval, I received only two samples and the average was 4.5. And the next one was two and the average was 6.5. So sometimes there was only one sample like 10 and the average is obviously 10. So in this example, what's happening is you want to unblock either on the queue or on the one hertz semaphore. And you don't wanna wait on the queue forever. You don't wanna wait on the semaphore forever. You don't wanna pull with a one millisecond timeout uh, to the queue saying, um, you know, give me data, otherwise a timeout in one, sec 
millisecond. This is the most efficient way of uh, blocking on multiple uh, semaphores or queues. We, you have to create a queue set. So let's recap. You have a one hertz semaphore and a producer task of one hertz that gives this semaphore. You have a data queue handle and the producer task of um, uh, data uh, randomly weights and produces samples and sends it to the queue. And the idea is your processor task needs to wait on either the one hertz semaphore or the data queue. And the way you do that is you first create a queue set. And again, two of the most important points, the, the when you create the queue set, your queue set needs to be able to absorb as many pointers uh, of memory as the items and the semaphores combined. If you have four queues, it has to be able to absorb the depth of all four queues. So in this case, it's 11 because I created a queue with 10 items deep, and then there's one binary semaphore. Just for clarity, I can always say 10 plus 1. Now, just because you created this queue set data handle doesn't mean you have connected the dots. You have to say that I want this one heart semaphore to unblock this queue set. I want this data queue handle, whenever this queue receives items, I want to unblock this data or semaphore queue set handle. Now the processor task is going to unblock on this one and not directly on the queue or the semaphore. So you have to do queue select from set. So select from set will either timeout and return you a null pointer within this timeout, or it will return you a handle of either the queue or the semaphore to tell you who unblocked us. So if you do X queue select from set, the return value will either be equals to the one hertz semaphore, or it will be equals to the data queue handle. So knowing that who unblocked you, then you should be able to uh, block on X semaphore take with zero. So it's not even blocking. So you can rest assured that line number 686 is definitely going to um, get here. And you don't need to put a timer, a timeout here because the whole reason you made it through line number 685 is because you received the one hertz semaphore. So this was just some logic that computed the average at one hertz. This else statement will never execute because we know that we are unblocked by the one hertz semaphore, so therefore the one hertz semaphore take will work. Now, the data queue. Knowing that we are unblocked by the data queue, we can we can uh, definitively go uh, go ahead and do X queue receive on this data queue uh, with a zero timeout, and we will never get to the error case as you saw. I never, we never saw an error printf here. So this is a queue set uh, which allows you to unblock on multiple queues or semaphores. Uh, this is probably the most simplistic example, which shows that there might be a need where you want to precisely do something at one hertz and receive data from some queue. But there, there could be mul multiple other examples. For example, in a networking application, you could unblock on multiple sockets at the same time, and you could, you want to unblock on data received from multiple uh, network sockets at the same time. So this is a free RTOS queue sets. 